Hello, welcome back to Blender CC Live Noting. In this episode, I want to show you um, Node 3 setup that allows you uh, to create this kind of setup. So basically, you can see um, Susan Monkey Head is kind of rotating randomly, but it's always on top of the floor, or well, sometimes except um, the ear sometimes goes through the, uh, to the, through the floor. It's not 100% perfect, but it's actually quite a nice setup. Um, the trick is that here is actually to use uh, bounding box. If I just give you the, the node tree, you might think, okay, it's uh, it seems pretty complicated, but it's actually not that not that hard. Uh, this is the whole setup. I'm gonna stop there and I will recreate this from scratch. So what's going on is actually um, one node is doing the whole thing. Um, it's the it's the bounding box. So this node um, recently got updated and it's actually a lot more useful now because you have um, you can quickly get the bounding box of any objects and then you can get the center you can have the minimum and maximum bounding box and actually the actual size in any axis that you need okay so this is interesting so let's get started save as So bounding box study. Let's create um, just a box. Actually, maybe just use donut or a torus. Easier to understand. And we're gonna be using. We can use viewer v mesh, but we can also use viewer draw. And I'm gonna create the torus so we have this in 3d scene and I want to see the bounding box for the bounding box input we just need to provide the vertices and the output is looking something like this um, so that's pretty obvious it's looking at the the points and it's gonna draw this box that's kind of fit uh, fit this 3d objects inside it and so we can have minimum maximum in any axis x x y z axis and then also the size so the size of this donut for example if we check the dimensions 2.5 2.5 0.5 .5. let's see if this is correct So 2.5 size in Y, 2.5 and size in Z, 0 0.5. Okay, that's actually what what it is. The bounding box will tell you the dimensions. Um, if I try to rotate this torus now, rotate. Let's rotate it using Euler. You can see the bounding box is changing. So that's actually kind of something that's interesting and let's plug this there as well so as it is changing the bounding box shapes will always try to remain like a, a simple box but I, I really like this actually um, and I know I learned from Houdini uh, another 3d app that half size of the bounding box is where uh, you can put 3D objects on the floor so that you always have that so the idea is exactly that if you want to put this bounding box on the floor or the actual objects you just simply get the half so you use the math scalar math and we're gonna get the, the z-axis in this case and simply get the half half size of the height and the output goes into the matrix and you simply shift the objects using that amount so this is oops vector in in the z axis goes into the position so now the box the bounding box is on the floor and for this object then 
we can also do the same oops duplicate this position put it on the floor okay so that's exactly what's going on so I can rotate this toes donut oops I lost the mouse okay I need to do this go back and I can use frame info um, I can use a uh, map multiply this this goes in there this in there and I can perhaps even offset it so now these stores can rotate and it's always gonna be on the floor so like I said it's not 100% always work but this is pretty good and um, if you see the, the torus is rotating correctly but uh, here's the thing you can actually reference you can reference this torus currently okay it's it's rotating but the rotations in real in real life this torus is not actually rotating but the actual vertices is rotating that's why the bounding bo the bounding box is changing we can but we can use that same information and then rotate an actual torus uh, and then also keyframe the positions so that we can actually bake these animations otherwise if you bake this if you try to bake this it's actually just simply applying transformations inside spectro so the way I do it is I create another mesh so this all this that's going on here is just gonna be a tool the actual torus is gonna be this guy so this torus can be hidden so this guy is the, the final thing so let's create another matrix and this is gonna be the position we know the position is correct and it's gonna lift the torus to be always on the on the floor now I'm lifting the torus half of this bounding box but I want to also rotate it in the same way that I am rotating the torus over here so for that it's slightly tricky right but we, we can use matrix rotation Euler matrix Euler this is XYZ rotations okay so we can also plug this in XYZ and it's gonna be a rotation matrix and we're gonna combine this together so matrix math I believe it should be like this so now you can see this is the final objects location and rotation information is being projected here and we can actually bake this right and underneath we can see this uh, also the original object that we can actually hide um, can save this in fact we don't we don't need the viewer we mesh we can just use a viewer draw another few draw and so just gonna connect this manually so by now it looks a little bit messy with all these noodles but at least we create a, some kind of tool so I can actually delete this file save as so all these tools is generating this donut. So I guess pretty cool. Uh, that's pretty cool. Thanks to the bounding box. 
and if you ever want to replace anything you can use you guys simply replace this torus um, let's say I want to replace it with uh, Suzanne and the way to do that you know, unfortunately I mean in recent blender we need to switch to this tool and then we use um, shift and right mouse button don't cut it you simply want to use shift and right mouse button and drag this is going to create a rerouter some kind of this yellow dot and then you can replace this with Suzanne or any other objects simply replace the polygon and now Suzanne head is rotating yeah I guess that's kind of cool trick um, hopefully you'll find this useful it's just an animation tool and if you ever want to bake it I'll show you the manual way to do this so keyframing location and rotations and then select this Suzanne and then for every frame you just hit I and then keep doing this for until for until all your frame is covered there is actually an automated way to do this but uh, it's a uh, you can use Python but for now this is how I'm doing it well actually if you hit R that's actually kind of running commands to keyframe to keyframe this so you can actually use that same commands and it put it into Python and yeah if I make this 100% if I delete everything everything I will have Suzanne that's kind of rotating and it's always on the floor um, always like not exactly sometimes the ear sometimes the ear goes in I don't know why maybe there's something there but it's okay from here from this angle is it looks like it's correct at least you don't need to manually um, rotate it and this is kind of like a rolling animations um, some game engine and should have this uh, so it's a way to you you can have any objects and you can roll it based on the bounding box but anyway hopefully this is useful hopefully you understand the whole setup um, and yeah tell me tell me know uh, let me know if you have any ideas how to improve this but thanks again for tuning in and I'll see you next time thank you bye